Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Emily and today I'm going to show you my classics collection. So I'm about to move and I've been putting off packing my books because look at my bookshelf. It is so beautiful. My plants just came back to me and I'm living. But within the next week, they're gonna be packed. So I thought it was the perfect time before I pack everything up to just go through all of my classics and show you guys what I have. I'm gonna be doing it by edition, but a lot of my classics aren't in a particular edition. They're just random because I buy most of them used. I'm not going to talk specifically about a book unless I've read it and I loved it. Yeah, this is gonna be a long video, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with my Penguin classics because I have the most, whether it's Penguin the classic Black Spine, which they're all down here, or the Penguin Modern or the Penguin 20th Century. So we got a lot, let's go. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into depth on these first four because in the last video that I filmed, I filmed it a couple days ago, it'll go up before this one. I talked about them in depth because they're all new. First one is The Book of Marjorie Kemp by Marjorie Kemp, Marguerite de Navarre's Heptamarin, Niall's Saga, and The Lays of Marie de France. All of those are medieval books. I talked about them in my last video, so if you want more detail about what, kind of what they are, why I have them, <laughs> um, check out the other video. I'll link it down below. These are the rest of my Penguin Black Spines. So I have Against Nature, by Joris Carl Heisman. I have The Victim by Saw Bello. Picnic at Hanging Park by Joan Lindsay. Kane by Jean Tromer. Passing by Nella Larson, which you guys will see again soon. I talked about it in my last video, but this is at the top of my TBR right now. Edith Wharton's Custom of the Country, Don Quixote. Gonna read this at some point this year. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I read this book about two years ago or a year and a half ago and I loved it. It's definitely one that I want to reread pretty soon. It did not go where I thought it was gonna go which I really liked and I just love the atmosphere of it but I'll probably wait until fall or winter. The Tenet of Wildfield Hall by Anne Bronte. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Definitely one of my favorite classics of all time. I adore this book. I adore Anne Bronte. She does not get enough love for everything that she did. This book is a masterpiece in my opinion. It's groundbreaking. I think it's just spectacular. I think everybody should read it and this in particular is an amazing copy. If you put it to the flop test, ooh, do you see that flop? That's a good book. Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Sanditon by Jane Austen. This is a collection. Lady Susan is an epistolary novel she wrote when she was young, and The Watsons and Sanditon are two of her unfinished novels. I absolutely love this edition. I think it's beautiful. I had another one, but I gave that one away in favor of this one because it's beautiful. Lady Susan is honestly hilarious. I highly recommend if you haven't read that much Jane Austen or you read all of Jane Austen, I think Lady Susan's for everybody. And there's a fantastic adaptation that's hilarious with Kate Beckinsale called Love and Friendship. So definitely check that out. And it's nice and short too. It's about a hundred pages. So if you're new to Jane Austen, it may be a good introduction. And my last Penguin Black Spine is Henry James's The Portrait of a Lady. I've been meaning to read this book. Jalen has a copy, so maybe we'll buddy read it because it's a big classic and I'm intimidated to read it by myself. The last of the Penguin classics I have are some of these older editions of Penguin classics. So I have Emily Zola's Le Asimere, which I have gotten to the middle of like twice. Really liked it. There was never a reason that I stopped reading that it, because I didn't enjoy the book. I just stopped. I really want to pick this up and actually finish it. I have Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, Silas Marner by George Eliot. I have Middlemarch and I'll show you. I have a very beautiful copy. I have not been able to get through Middlemarch. This is a bunch shorter so I'm thinking next time I have a feeling that I want to try George Eliot, I'm gonna pick up this instead. I have Oblomov by Ivan Goncharov, so this is a Russian classic, and I also have 
The Histories by Herodotus. Okay, and now I'm gonna move on to my Oxford classics. I don't have as many of these. We're kind of getting to the point where it's gonna be a lot of standalone classics, but I'm gonna show you just my collection. So I have Ovid's Metamorphoses, Jane Austen's Teenage Writings, which this was a gift from Jalen, and it includes a lot of Jane Austen's Juvenalia and one that I love, which is her History of England, which as a historian reading her history by a very prejudiced and partial historian is absolutely hilarious. I have The Reef by Edith Wharton. Jane Austen's Emma, which is my second favorite Jane Austen book. I adore this book so much. If you are unsure about Jane Austen, try this one out. I think it's the funniest of all of her books. I think it's better plotted than Pride and Prejudice, even though that's my favorite. I just, I adore this book so much. I read it about once a year. I have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which I haven't read yet. I tried. I'm gonna get there. I liked it. I read all of volume one. I liked it. I just, I just haven't finished it yet. I have Jane Austen's Selected Letters and North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. And the last of my big collections is my Barnes and Noble classics. I actually love the Barnes and Noble classics. I hated them for a while. I don't particularly pay attention to their introductions because they're not my favorite, but I think they're beautiful and they make this beautiful rainbow. So I'm gonna show you which ones I have from here. I have Ethan Frome and Selected Stories by Edith Wharton, as you can see. There's a lot of Edith Wharton on here. I love her. I have Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I haven't read this yet, but I've read Tess of the D'Urbervilles and I loved it, so I'm excited to pick this up. I have Howard's End by E.M. Forster. Night and Day by Virginia Woolf. House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. This is also definitely top 10 classics, maybe top 10 favorite books of all time. You can see how much I annotated this book. I loved every second that I was reading this book and it just made me fall in love with Edith Wharton. It's about a character named Lily Bart who, uh, I love her so much. She has fallen onto hard times. She's trying to get back to the top of the old New York aristocracy in the late 19th century and just is too good to do the things required to get to the top and it ends up being a tragedy, which is sad, but oh, I loved this book so much. I also have The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, which I'm going to read very soon. Moving on, I also have Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte and The Mammoth, that is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. And my last two of the Barnes and Noble's classic editions are Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I haven't read any Dostoevsky yet. You'll see I have a few on my shelves that I really want to get to. This is one. It's just so big. And Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, which I read for the first time December of 2019 and absolutely loved. I know this is going to be a feel-good story that I go back to over and over again. Okay, actually this is my last collection, but there are only four, so I wouldn't call it like a major collection. These are my Modern Library classic editions. And in these editions, I have Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which <laughs> if you can't tell, it's my favorite book of all time. I love it so much. I will encourage every single person to read this book. It is funny, it is heartwarming, it is just absolutely perfect in my opinion. I love it. And I think this edition is absolutely beautiful too. I also have Vanity Fair by William Thackeray and The Turn of the Screw and In the Cage by Henry James. So those are all my major collections and I'm now gonna go through just one by one, shelf by shelf, the other classics that I have. They're mostly in random edition, so I'm sorry about that. I'm less about aesthetics and more about price. So the first one I have is this beautiful copy that I got as a gift of The Greatest Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. I love Sherlock Holmes. I read all of these stories and I just, I love them so much. I have this kind of weird old edition of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy that I got from a thrift store about 10 years ago. I like it because it's illustrated, has some nice pictures. Let me see if I can find one. See, it has some nice illustrations. And Anna Karenina is actually something that I do really wanna read soon or 
at least fairly soon um, because it is a bigger classic but I've only heard good things about it. Um, one of the channels I follow, Carolyn Marie Reads, which I love her reading vlogs, she is hyped on this book so much that I'm looking at it on my show and like, hmm, maybe I need to give it a try soon. I have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, another copy of Northanger Abbey, and a copy of Dracula in the Norton Critical Editions. I got these for a class I was taking called Terror and Fiction. I had to get like, the fancy academic and I don't really use this copy of Northanger Abbey to read. I use my other copy just because I had to annotate it so much for class that I kind of find it distracting now, especially when I'm just trying to enjoy the story. So they're both just absolutely beautiful additions. I have The Touchstone by Edith Wharton, which I talked about a lot in my last video because I'm currently reading it. It's one of her novellas. I have this beautiful edition of The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky, and this is the Everyman Libraries edition. It is so beautiful and it has even this bookmark. I've started reading the first chapter of this before and I really liked it, but for some reason I just like wasn't in the right headspace. I'm a mood reader so even if something's good I could just not be in the mood for it, but I do want to pick this up soon. I have this beautiful old copy of Pride and Prejudice that's actually the one that Jalen used when we just did our buddy read of Pride and Prejudice so it has all of these tabs in it so I can see her favorite parts too. I have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe which I read in high school after The Heart of Darkness when I prefer this one much more and The Door by Magda Sazbo going down to my next shelf. I have The Awakening by Kate Chopin, which I read in high school as well, and I do want to reread because I feel like I didn't appreciate it. There's this beautiful copy of To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, and this even more beautiful copy of Middlemarch by George Eliot. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I have tried to read this book multiple times. I've gotten halfway through one time and I just couldn't finish it. So what I've done is I've tabbed, I don't know if you can see, 30 tabs to finish it in a month. Each color is a different week. And one day I'm just gonna pick this up and do like the 30 pages a day that are necessary to read this book in a month and I'm just gonna do it because I really wanna read it. I have Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, which I think was my favorite book that I ever read for school, which is why it stayed on my bookshelf since like seventh grade. But I wanna reread this. I don't think I've read it since then, but I've just kept it around because I loved it so much. And I also have this beautiful edition of The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Again, I got like halfway through this before I stopped, but I really liked it. Being a mood reader is so annoying, so I'm definitely gonna go back and read this. The next classics I have, I have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, this beautiful copy that my sister gave me of Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I have not read any Dickens, but I have it on my shelf if I ever have the feeling that I need to. And I have My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I also have two vintage classics editions. I have Lolita, which is this beautiful copy I actually got for free at a little free library. I was bringing some books in and I saw this and I snatched it. And Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. This is a new acquisition, so definitely check out my other video for more info on it. I also have one Agatha Christie book, and that is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, which was fantastic. I read this in one sitting. If you're looking for just like a quick, interesting, unique, and original mystery, I highly recommend this book. Okay, and we're moving down the shelf. So the next one I have is another Daphne du Maurier book, and it is Rebecca, which I love this book. This is one of those classics besides Jane Austen, that really got me into reading classics, and I can't thank Daphne du Maurier enough for writing this. I have 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne, and Persuasion by Jane Austen. This is a horrible edition. I think it's pretty ugly, but I got it for like five pounds when I was in Bath, and I was in Bath, which is where a lot of Persuasion is set, so I was like, I'm just gonna do it. And I wanted it and I read it while I was in Bath, which was a fun experience, even though Jane Austen hated Bath, but it's okay, we'll pretend. But yeah, I think it's pretty ugly. I have Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. It's the last classic on the shelf. And to be completely honest, I read this book last summer and I remember nothing about it. 
I don't know if I read it too fast because it is pretty long. I think it is about 600 pages. Yeah, it's, it's like 550 pages total. So maybe I just read it too fast. I read it over the space of like two days. So I would definitely go back and reread this one because I know a lot of people really, really love this book. And then I have two Penguin 20th Century Classics. I realize I forgot to put these with the other Penguin books. My bad. And they're both brand new. Well, not brand new. They're not new books, but I just got them. And they are Summer by Edith Wharton and The Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch, which this is a beautiful copy. <laughs> I say this every single time. Like I showed this in my last video, uh, my book haul. Beautiful. I have Stoner by John Williams, Love and Friendship, which is one of Jane Austen's Juvenalia works. I have it just independently here and this super cute copy. Yet again, another Jane Austen book. This beautiful copy of Sense and Sensibility that I got from a friend. It is, what is it? I don't know what these editions are called. Oh, it's just vintage classic, but it's so beautiful. And even though I prefer paperback, I actually really love this hardcover version. And I also have Jane Austen's Mansfield Park in the same vintage classics edition. This one is actually paperback. I spilled all over the front, but I still love it. We're getting down to the end, guys. Sticking with me. I have Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery, which I love this book. And I haven't seen the TV show yet, but I did see the original adaptation, the movie version. My grandpa gave me this copy, absolutely loved Anne of Green Gables. My sister and I watched it multiple times whenever we went over to our grandparents' house, so it has just a special place in my heart. I have this very old but fun copy of The Odyssey by Homer. My third copy of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This one is falling apart. It's the first one I got. I don't really read from it, but I like to have it still. I have George Orwell's Animal Farm, which I talked about in my book haul video. I have read this book. I loved it and I just got a copy for myself. Then I have this massive version of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. It's massive. The print is tiny but i did a reading speed thing and it told me that i could read this book in like 23 hours so i was thinking maybe i'll do a readathon like a 24-hour readathon where i just try to read les mis in 24 hours because it's such a big book that i don't know when i'll get to it if it's not just like all in one go. We made it to the end guys. My last two classics are both my oldest copies of books that I have. They're very delicate and so I will show you what they are. They're both by Benjamin Disraeli. I got them both as gifts. First one is this beautiful copy of Henrietta Temple by Benjamin Disraeli. Like I said, it's very old. This particular one was published or printed I should say in the 1860s I believe and this is the new edition it was originally published in the 1830s 1837 and I have not read it yet because I'm scared to read it but I will read it eventually very carefully I think the cover is beautiful you have this kind of gold portrait of Benjamin Disraeli himself which is very cool but yeah I'm really grateful that I got this as a gift though and this is my other one this one's even more fragile and I believe older. This is, oh, it's about the same time. This is 1868. This one actually has the exact date on it and it is Vivian Gray by Benjamin Disraeli. So I actually tried to read this one, but turns out that this copy, though beautiful and extremely old, has printing errors. If you look, everything's normal up until about page 65 and it goes to page 67. 68, 69, 70, 71. See, this is all fine, all normal. 73, 75, 76, 77. It's fine all the way up until page 80. But on page 80, see, so it says 80, it jumps back and restarts to page 65. And so it has this jump, but the issue is it doesn't make up for it on the other side. So it goes again from 65 up through 80 but this time when it gets to 80 it skips to 97 so i have a printing error um, in this book so when i tried to read it the first time i got up to page 80 and then i was so confused because i was like we're back to page 65 this is interesting and i haven't seen whether there are any other major printing errors in the rest of the book but i know that um because of that i'm missing quite a few pages from this book so 
we'll see if I ever find another copy to read, but I'm definitely going to keep this one because it's this nice, I mean, just absolutely stunning old 1868 edition of this book. Okay, that's it. We made it. Those are all of my classics. I love classics. I think they're my favorite genre to read and I've really gotten into them over the past year. So a lot of these I haven't read yet, but you will be seeing a ton of them on this channel. I'm participating in Lucy the Reader's Classics Community 2020 challenge, so you will definitely see more. Let me know what your favorite classic is. Do you like reading classics? Now that I've done that, I can finally pack up my books and I'll have to say bye to this beautiful shelf until I get to Michigan. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great week.